Next, I have a triple feature to run off. The KKK. Yes, the white supremacist group. And it's all about putting down racists because I'm a white supremacist. And the races I'm going to be talking about today, Daytona, NASCAR, and the Grand Prix. Oh, and Formula One? Fuck that shit. They need to turn left instead of turning right. <laughs> like that, didn't you? Now, the KKK I'm referring to, not the Ku Klux Klan, the Kite Trilogy. Yes, that son of a bitch. Kite anime from 98, the follow-up Liberator from 2007, and the live-action adaptation in 2014. Kick back, you're going to enjoy this shit. So, finished Kite 2014, here's my thoughts. We're going in reverse. The opening homage is pretty tame compared to the original. Kind of don't want to finish it now, but I'll do it later on. Yeah. I actually had to watch the beginning of Double Dragon to uh, the first, the pilot for Double Dragon to get back into this. Because I was like, this movie is fucking stupid. <sighs> Definitely changed up the original story layout by adding in flesh cartels. Yeah. Woo! Samuel L. Jackson. Hmm. Can he save this movie and be the badass motherfucker of all time? Let's find out on this episode of Unsolved Mysteries. Ah, uh, Sawa is pretty. Shame they let the old lady live. I wanted to see that old bitch die, man. Fuck. Also, shame they didn't keep Sawa's earrings. Yeah, they changed that too change a lot of shit i get changing the storyline from the anime especially for 2014 because it was coming up on the cusp of the me too movement four years later in 2017 when rose mcgowan came out against harvey weinstein yeah and even before that there were different allegations popping up but oh oh my <laughs> do i like the change in having sawa as an addict i guess so for now Honestly, Sam could have pulled off a groomer. He's got the demeanor for it. He really could have pulled off a groomer in this fucking film, but oh well. More on that later. The wall of paper mache assault rifles are nice. Yeah, totally paper mache. Fucking beautiful. I miss doing paper mache, but goddamn, that glue on your hands? Uh, fuck that. Feels good, though, when it dries. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, it's like slimy and goopy, and it's like... <laughs> No, hate it. Uh, let's see. Vic Thornhill's pretty intriguing. Also glad they kept the gun compartment in Sava's purse. Most badass opening to that anime. Oh, man. What's the numbers gang? I don't know. They numbers? I guess they hate numbers. They're gang of numbers? I don't know. I don't want to fuck with five. Because then it turns into six. I don't want to fuck with six. Because then it turns into seven. Because one's already dead. <laughs> Ooh, scary shit. Man, Sawa slit Clive's throat and she got eidetic memory. Yeah, that was cool shit. Eidetic memory is important. Obery looks like Obery. He really does. He looks like an Obery. He just does. Interesting, Sawa's got a torn family picture. I never noticed it till now, but Sawa kind of looks like my friend Caroline from ages ago. Yeah. When me and Care Bear used to talk, she used to look like that. But now she's my, I think she's like a few, I'm trying to remember if she's older than me or younger. I think she's older than me now. She's got a kid. She's doing good. Uh, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that bridge up, though. Uh, oh, well. Interesting. Namiya has the same family picture layout as Sawa. So the family is from Policeman's Day, so Sawa is from a cop family. Cool. But which cop? Robocop? I don't know. Police Academy? Oy. I don't mind the name changes either. I really don't. It happens. <sighs> Love Obery's parkour style. Like, he just jumps down, 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 down. Like, cool. Amp drug makes you forget memories, but when it wears off, you get flashes of broken memories. Sounds legit. The color gradient for this is on point. Yes, definitely. 
I like the muted atmosphere with semi-bright colors intermixed. It really does give it all. It really gives that good ambience. Also, good kill with the dildo earlier. Oh, yeah, that was cool shit. <laughs> Fucking dildo gun. Nice. The music choices are interesting as well. Same goes for the location change. Bathroom scene homage was mediocre average. Yeah. The subway explosion homage was downgraded to a short, meh, car seat fight with Staggy blowing up. <sighs> That's dog shit. <sighs> Carl burning the evidence is smart, but felt blah. <laughs> uh, they kept the meaning of Sawa's name, too. Surprise. Damn, Sawa got to Amir. Amir's story about his ham was dark. And they chopped his shit up and fed the bits of his fingers to the villagers. That's creepy. Smart, but creepy. Damn, Sawa beheaded Amir. Hold on one second. That's better. I need to zoom in. Uh, let's see where are we at. Uh, ah. So, Otis Breedlove... Take from that what you will. <laughs> I'm Otis Breedlove. I love my cousin. We get marred. <laughs> she ain't pregnant with my brothers, cousins, aunts, uncles, and grandfather's daughter-in-law. Oh, yeah. Anyway. He was framed. Ooh. After finding out that Carl was the one stealing weapons from the unit and... Carl killed Sawa's parents. <gasps> what? Well, that's more coherent versus the anime. Because the anime left that whole plot line just open. Just... Oh my god! You killed my parents! How? Why? Otis also framed Sawa's dad for the missing weapons. Otis is Obery's dad. What? Obery has a dad? What? Okay. I'm being sarcastic, because it's like, what? <laughs> I did like the pistol Otis had. Two-shot uh, hand cannon. Awesome shit. Carl makes a point about making up for all the bad he's done and taking care of Sawa as redeeming himself. Accurate. Wow, Sawa pumped Carl full of amp, and her and Opry escaped, and the freed girls are okay. <laughs> But they don't all live happily ever after they have a big ass orgy, everybody dies. <laughs> Interesting how they took the title literally, basing it off a happy memory involving Sawa and Obery flying a kite together. Okay. Does it follow the anime? About 30%. <laughs> oh, Christ. The homages were nice. I'll give it that. But does it top the original, aside from giving the story an explanation on why Sawa's parents were killed? Uh, when I saw the poster for this, I thought... Clo uh, do well, let me see here. Does it top... Oh, it doesn't top the original, aside from giving the story explanation on their parents. That's cool. When I saw the poster for this, I thought Chloe Grace Moretz as Sawa. I thought that's who it was on the cover. It's not. It's uh, India Isley. Interesting name. Considering she did the sequel... Oh, that's right. I didn't specify the sequel. Considering she did the Kick-Ass sequel a year prior, she would have been perfect for the role. Because she would have been, you know, prep-ready, weapon-ready, and training-ready as well. Uh. <laughs> Is this a good movie? In the trilogy of Kite. Because this fucker's not about kites unless you consider this one to be about kites, specifically. <sighs> yeah. It's not. <laughs> <coughs> it's better than Liberator, but not the original. Oh, God, where do I get the Liberator? <laughs> Ooh, baby. If Park Chan Wok and Kite's creator had directed this, it would have been better. Park Chan Wok did Old Boy, 03. And if the kite creator had been involved, 
this would have been a lot better. As a dirty cop flick, it's meager. It really is it's meager. I, if it since it's a dirty cop flick, I wish I could say it's better than Narc, but it's not. <laughs> That's sad. So, was badass motherfucker Sam Jackson able to save his film in Unsolved Mysteries? Sadly, no. Have to tune in next week and find out who else can save it on Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but his title is unaffected. He's still the badass motherfucker in all of the world. Ah, uh, fuck. I'd say he was okay in this. Like, his energy was there. And, let's see here. India had Sawa's energy, but it was forced. Nailed the Lolita look. Yeah, she nailed that. I would say it's a mediocre, okay revenge story, but stick with the first anime. Yeah, stick with the first anime. Do I mind the plot change? Kind of, but not really. Though, for being a South African film, you think they wouldn't mind pushing the envelope. Because some countries, besides the U.S., have no problem making controversial flicks. True story. Like, everybody seems to think, well, Americans... Let me specify. Americans think we make the best flicks ever. <sighs> Tell me something good. <laughs> Lies Americans tell themselves to make them feel to make them feel better every day to get out of bed. Awesome. Samuel was good. India as well. India was really good. I did like her. Shame there wasn't much exploring on the world around them aside from the opening text crawl. That's it. Little world building goes good in a film. Duh. Ugh. I'd say the director had the right idea, but it got lost in translation, diluting the complexities from the anime. Yeah, that happens. Like, you got the subtle grooming undertones, but no sexual attraction between them. Yeah. The graphic violence is toned down because legal issues and rating system, but has all turned into violence. Yeah. Like, if you want an anime that translated well from original to live action, Ghost in the Shell. Despite everybody bitching about Scarlet's casting. I don't have a problem with it. Like, it plays out the same fucking way. It's good. This, overall, 3.3 .3 out of 10. Yeah, I've seen worse. I've seen a lot worse. I've seen so much bad shit, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> All right, Kite Liberator, here's my thoughts. This cocksucking film. Man, no dub. Bummer. Zero out of 10. Because I'm so used to dubbing shit and whatnot. And I've watched, the only thing I've ever watched subbed was uh, Attack on Titan Season 1. I still have to finish that shit. Fuck. I've said that in like probably five or six vids. <laughs> kind of off put by that and the space introduction. Yeah, space intro was just shit. Like, I should have stopped by then. The bathroom homage to the elevator in the first film is kind of lame. <laughs> Ugh, definitely off put by the CGI in this. Yeah, that really threw me the fuck off. Oh my god. <clears throat> but I forgot 2000s anime incorporated CGI elements into their work. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, let's see here. You move. Thank you. That was my laptop I ended up that you heard. Um. Yeah, 2000s anime was massive for incorporating CGI. Like, the first one that did that was, well, the first big CGI was Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within, from 2001. <sighs> but yeah, this was just, I don't know, the CGI just really seemed to the fuck off, but I'm remembering, like, you know, you had Karis the Prophecy, you had, um, Jesus Christ, Trinity Blood, um... I think High School of the Dead had some. What 
what else came out in two thousands? Something else big came out in two thousands, anime wise. I don't know what the fuck it was. I don't remember. I can't remember. Uh but yeah, they incorporated CGI a lot. No No aka don't mind being Oh stupid autocorrect. <laughs> Monica M O N A K A Don't mind being sexually harassed by her manager. Oh my Fucking funny. That's a lot of ice cream by Hagen dazs <laughs> Like, you can tell it's Hagen dazs but they zoomed it out and shrunk the text, but you can still tell it's Hagen dazs And they just shrunk it just to avoid copyright. <laughs> Monica's Mars Rocks bracelet from her dad is an homage to Sawa's earrings from the first movie. Easy pickup. And I did like that. That was nice. That was a nice bracelet. But her earrings, those hours are so cool. Damn, that classroom got some wild students bringing in beer, guns, and porn. <laughs> Damn, that's like 80s shit. What happened on the space station? The hell is that beast thing? Also, it totally rips off Dead Space Necromorphs, but it puts on but puts it on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> oh good. Dr. Doy. <laughs> This fucking movie. Die! <laughs> Untested food caused the mutation in the crew that made the creature. <laughs> Dr. Doi and some of the crew escaped the space station. I can't make this shit up. That's his fucking name. Oh, God. Gotta say, I'm unimpressed by this follow-up. <laughs> also, not into the maid aesthetic fetish either. Yeah, made a st made fetish. What the fuck is that shit? So pathetic. Dumb as fuck, honestly. Uh, what? You're not in the taku? <laughs> no, bitch. I don't care for that shit. Uh, funny how the cop asked Monica out on a date. <laughs> That's totally normal. <laughs> oh, joy. The creature followed them home on the ship. <laughs> the fireworks bit was neat, I guess. Yeah, them shooting all fireworks in the winter was cool. So the red gun and assassin get referenced, but nothing more. Cool. So the monster is Monica's father. Huh. It's so tame in its violence and the story is average. More like dog shit average. Ugh. Well, Doi's death by Monica was good, and Sin's too. Yeah, they both got their heads blown out, like, woo, yay. Wow, her dad regenerated and confronted her, then it ends? What fucking shit is this? Ugh, worst anime I've ever seen. 2.7 out of 10. Ugh, that's exactly how a bitch ends. It ends with her, her dad looks at her, her monster dad looks at her, and then it's... <gasps> And then it cuts to the fucking music. Like, what the fuck is that shit? Like, oh, nigga. <sighs> now for the original. <laughs> I'm all done. Fuck. Oh, God, this was so horrible. <laughs> God almighty. Imagine they made an actual movie about kites. And it was based on this shit. <laughs> <sighs> And fun fact, I got the idea to watch Kite from another video that I saw on YouTube. Counting down the top ten, uh, something anime. Let me look it up, it's actually on my history. Ah, uh, uh, top ten rated R insanely brutal anime from 80s and 90s. From Marvelous Videos. Yeah, it was on their list. Okay, finished Kite. Here's my thoughts. Uh, the plot sounds like something adapted from Leon the Professional. How right I was. Holy fuck. 152 in. That was an epic kill. And the way her lunchbox produced the gun. Flawless beauty. Yep, I was hooked a minute 52 in. Whoo, baby. 
Her grenade earrings are pretty too. I like them earrings. That's so cool. <clears throat> oh my God. The make fat French fries total parody in McDonald's. <laughs> the music transition when Sawa meets Obri is funny given how she just blew those fuckers away. <sighs> Violence to gentle piano music. What a trip. It's like boom, boom, boom. Ding, 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 ding. Might as well throw in the Barney song. Boom, 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 boom. I love you. You love me. We're a happy anime. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, God. This is goddamn anime. <laughs> Obery making that sweet hoop and blowing the basketball up. <laughs> Just because the bitch got splashed. <laughs> Damn, nice Pringles logo on the can. That was a good logo for 98. That's good shit. Oh, wow. Akai saved Sawa and bet her after her parents were killed. <laughs> that was very tame pedo content. <laughs> like, damn. I'm gonna save you from your murdered parents. You're gonna fuck me good after that, too. Okay. Sawa's bathroom fight was fucking gnarly. Hell yeah. Stellar action and wicked brutality. Fucking A. Shame she lost an earring. Because you know how girls only lose a fucking earring. Where's my earring? I need my earrings. I don't want to match anymore. I don't want to do that. I need ice cream. Give me chocolate. I like this hour. Typical bitch meltdown. <laughs> Uh, Aura station. Bruh, I lost my earring, brah. <laughs> Pretty cool, her earrings are made from the blood of her parents. Totally normal. Holy shit, Sawa's fall from the bathroom. That was a wild, crazy anime gravity. <laughs> uh, Uber East train shootout was spectacular. I did like that. It should have had more, though. Because the way Marvelous talked it up, it sounded like it was a massive shootout. And it was just like, Obery threw four grenades, he shot them, and they all went off simultaneously. Or no, in tandem explosions, that's what it was. Uh, Sawa killed Kane, Kanye, but it looks like Kane. <laughs> like, literally, Kanye's name in this is K-A-N-I-E. That sounds like Kane. I killed Kenny. <laughs> and got revenge on a guy who killed her parents. Like, in the original, you don't know who killed her parents or why he killed her parents. But this is like, oh yeah, he killed her parents. Gotta say, the story is pretty good despite being short with no backstory on a guy actually killing Sawa's parents. Damn, Herbert got killed by a random girl. All because he was bringing cat food home. Cats' lives don't matter. Hashtag Obery fucked up. <sighs> Hashtag fuck them pussies. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. <laughs> Hashtag kite lives matter. <laughs> oh, baby. Mm-mm-mm. Damn shame this wasn't longer, because, wow, like, it was heavy and deep. Shit. Clever on a Kai grooming Sawa into his work while hiding her from his police work. Smart. It does take the premise of the professional and pushes it further by introducing the sexual element, which is grazed over between Leon and Matilda. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, like, in this, they go full on with the pedophilia, which... I've seen worse. I've seen way fucking worse. This was tame. For me, for my standards, this is tame. You want to see hardcore? Go watch Bastard Out of Carolina. That'll wake your ass up. Ugh. Overall, it's a 7.8 out of 10. If it had more story, it could be more. So, that is the Kite Trilogy. <laughs> God damn, what a mess. That was the KKK. Now I want to go throw a sheet on my head and go join the real KKK. <laughs> <laughs> what?
Which was the standout among these three? The original, obviously. And if I had to rank this, it would actually be 1, 3, and Liberator. Yeah. Like, the 2014 comes in at number 2 because you get backstory on why her parents got killed. Which makes a lot more fucking sense. So that story, it is coherent, but it is vastly diluted and watered down from the original. <sighs> I still can't believe the original anime is only 46 minutes. That's crazy. It sounds like a two-hour flick at least, but nah. That's 46 minutes. That's a heavy-ass story to combine in 46 minutes. That's impressive. So, <clears throat> if you don't like anime, you don't like grooming, you don't like pedos, but you're cool with Batman taking on dark-haired boys and girls of different hair colors and shit and ethnicities, this is for you. But if you don't, it's totally for you. <laughs> oh, not for you. My bad. I'm on one tonight. Uh, if you don't like live-action adaptations of anime, I get it. I really do. Some of them are really bad. But, dude, Dragon Ball Evolution is some god-tier shit, man. You can't top that. Nothing tops that. I'm sorry. It's better than the anime itself. Oh, my God. I love that shit. It's so good. That's one. <laughs> um... <laughs> I don't know. Liberator, though. What a dog shit deal. I don't know why the hell they even said it was a follow-up. It's not even a follow-up. It's more like an uh, offshoot of um, Gunslinger Girl, actually. I did watch a few episodes of that back in... Was that 2011, I guess? Wait, let me look it up so I know what year it was. Because I forget things. <clears throat> Google. Search. Gunslinger Girl. I mean, 2011 sounds right, but I'm not sure. Is that it? Oh, 2003. Huh. But yeah, I probably watched it around 2011, give or take. Because every time new Ant I was looking for good shit to watch, and I think I watched it. Yeah, that was after Kanan. That's right. Yeah, that was after I watched Kanan. Because I was so hooked into uh, female leads and gun shootings and shit. Yeah, and then that was like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But yeah, but I did like the, what was that big ass fucking rifle that one chick had? That was some cool shit. Yep. <clears throat> I don't remember what the fuck it was, but it was cool as hell. Uh, if you aren't into this kind of shit at all, none of this whole trilogy, that's cool too. But if you like this trilogy and you had a good time watching it, despite how fucky it was, woo. More power to you. <laughs> I lost brain cells watching Liberator. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what a mess. There's like no coherency in that thing at all. It's just there. It's just like Kite Liberator. Like, Where's Kite? What the fuck is the Kite? <laughs> Got me spitting and shit. I'm so mad. Damn. Who's the MVP out of this trilogy? Sam Jackson. <laughs> God. I wonder how the hell he got roped into this, though. That's the weird thing. That's 2013. That was 2014, so he had just done... Uh, Samuel Jackson. There, Sam Jackson. What did you do in 2013, boy? What did you do? Well, he did Django Unchained two years before that. 
Oh wow, he did Kingman Kingsman the Secret Service. That's cool. Huh. But I wonder how the hell he got roped into this shit, because wow, what a mess. What did you do in 2014? They did the Avengers a year before that. Like well, two years before that in Captain America. So he had an off year then. Interesting. That's pretty cool. So, <sighs> fun times. <laughs> this is one trilogy I'm glad I don't have to rewatch. Fuck. <laughs> well, so I'm going to off here, upload this fucking shit, and just. Fuck. <sighs> <laughs> Till next time, like and subscribe for thoughts and prayers.